Hey coders, what's up? It's Chris here and today we're going to talk about the local data store in Parse. So far we've been talking about creating PF objects, PF queries, all in relation to uh, storing and retrieving data in our Parse backend. But you also have the option to store and retrieve from your local data store on the device. And you may want to do this, for example, if the user is working with the data and they've got to do a lot of things with it before saving it to the cloud, or maybe they don't have a connection and you want to store it locally, or maybe the data just doesn't need to be pushed to the cloud. For example, if it's data for their sessions, such as what screen they were on last or like what they were doing last so that when they restart their phone or they launch the app again, you can kind of bring them back to where they were. So stuff like that probably doesn't need to be stored on the Parse backend. Another scenario which may occur is that maybe you want to cache some of the data that has been pulled from the Parse backend. So let's say on one uh, app session, they retrieve some data from the Parse backend, and then you want that set of data to be available right away when they launch the app the next time. Uh, you can store it in the local data store. And so when they launch the app next time, um, you can pull that data from the local data store right away. And then in the background, you can go fetch some fresh data from the back end. So the local data store is actually very similar to the way we do things when working with the remote parse backend. And all you need to do is just specify in your query that you're retrieving it from the local data store. Okay, before we even get there, let's enable the local data store first. So here I'm looking at the parse documentation and you can come here by typing parse.com slash docs and going to iOS guide. Scrolling down to local data store on the left hand side and let's switch this to Swift code. So here it says that you just have to add an additional library to your Xcode project and then in the application did finish launching in the app delegate, uh, we already have this line set application ID and client key. This tells the parse library that we're using which parse app we're pointing to. We just have to write this line above that parse.enable local data store. So let's go ahead and do that first. I'm going to open up Xcode. I'm going to open up our parse demo app. This is the XC workspace file. Okay, so let's go to here our root node, scroll all the way down. Actually, there's a couple tabs up here. Make sure you look at general. Scroll all the way down under linked frameworks and libraries. Click plus. We're looking for, uh, let's just double check here, lib SQL Lite 3. So let's type that. If you're paying attention, you'll notice that these ones have this file extension TBD. While if we look at the documentation, it is calling for DYLIB. This initially stumped me a little bit, but when I did some research, it turns out that this one is the actual library, whereas the TBD is just a new way of doing things where this is just a text based file and then it actually points to this version as well as some cross platform information. So it's going to make the actual app package lighter and smaller. And so I'm going to go with this one right here and I'm going to hope that things will work just the same. We're going to take a look and find out. So under here, app delegation did finish launching with options above the parse application ID. We're just going to type in parse dot enable local data store and I'm going to press command B to just build the project make sure everything's running. Uh, let me just run the app to make sure it doesn't crash because we did add the TBD library and not the DYLIB one that it called for. Okay, so everything still looks good. Let's scroll down a little bit and take a look at how we save a PF object into the local data store and they call it pinning but it's basically the same thing as saving it to the parse backend. So here in this example, they're creating a PF object of type game score. They're setting some properties on it and some key value pairs, I mean, and then they're calling this method pin in background and that's going to store it in the local data store. And furthermore, there's another method on the PF object pin all in background and you can give them a list of PF objects to save into the local data store. So here in the view controller, uh, we've got this code from the previous time where we we're doing some queries. Uh, it's all commented out though, and that's okay. I'm going to create a local contact to store into the data store. Create a contact PF object to store locally. So let contact equals PF object uh, class name is contact. 
and then I'm going to set the first name property to Kevin, last name property to Smith, and let's say email is, you guessed it, Kevin Smith at example.com. And then to pin it locally or to store it into the local data store, we say pin in background. We can do pin in background with block if we want to run some code after it's pinned, but let's do that. So I'm going to run the project now and it's going to create this contact and it's going to set these key value pairs to it and then it's going to store it locally into the background. Okay, so things are fine. Then nothing crashed. I just ran the project, so it should have done it. And what I'm going to do now is comment that out and then try to retrieve it from the local data store. And the way we do that is very, very similar to how we retrieve things from the parse backend using PF query. So let me show you. Let query equals PF query. Uh, we're looking for objects of the class contact. And here we're going to add a constraint where key, uh, let's say first name is equal to Kevin. Actually, it probably needs to be capital K. And we're going to add an additional constraint or clause, which is dot from local data store. So you're telling the query that it's going to perform it from the local data store rather than connecting to the parse backend and performing that query. So now we just do our standard find objects and background with block. We're going to open up this block of code. It's got two parameters. One is a an array of PF objects that it can return. And here's the error. Actually, I'm not going to use find objects. I'm just going to say dot get first object in background with block. I'm going to open up this block of code. So it returns a single optional object. It could be nil if it doesn't find anything, or it could be the first object that matches this query where the first name is Kevin. So let's say object error. And inside the block here, we're going to say if error is nil, so no errors. And if let contact equals object. So if object is not nil as well, then there was a contact that was found. And here I'm just going to print object rather contact first name. Okay, so what should happen here is it's going to perform a query for first name equals to Kevin from the local data store. And it should find it because we saved it in the previous run using this code here. And then we're going to print the first name and we should see it in the console. So let me run this app right now. So there we go. It was so fast because it didn't even need to connect to the parse backend to do this. As soon as I launched it, you saw this print in the console. Now in the middle of recording this video, I was reading the documentation and I came across something where you can actually cache the query when you perform it. So uh, in the beginning of this video, when I mentioned some of the uses for the local data store, and one of the uses I mentioned was that maybe when you retrieve uh, some results from the parse backend, you may want to save it in the local data store so that on the next app run, uh, you could use that data to display while it's retrieving fresh data. Well, don't use the local data store for that because uh, under queries for a PF query, you can set a cache policy. And if you set it to cache, and there are a couple of options here, it will actually hold on to that result set so that you can use it for your subsequent app runs. Uh, and then you can refresh that query in the background. So the pinning things to the local data store is not for that purpose but it's still useful for saving pieces of data that you don't need to push onto the parse backend. So in a future video, we'll go through this PF query cache policy feature in more detail. Uh, but for now, for this video, I just wanted to show you guys how to use the local data store. And just to recap, it's pretty easy to use. Instead of saving in the background or calling save on the PF object, you call pin. And for the query, it's the same thing as performing queries in the parse backend, but you just have to add this extra clause. Uh, to tell it to search from the local data store instead. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up the video and share the video. I'll see you guys next week. Bye for now.